before you get on stage? Are you grabbing st your Stetson hat or a pair of Wranglers? <gasps> Ooh, Stetson hat. Are you going on stage without a pair of pants? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I just go. I'm just women power. I'm just going for it. Just me, <laughs> naked, Stetson hat. I am doing great, as always. Tori, thank you so much for joining us. This is our international special, and you know, we've been to Australia, we've been down under a few times. We love taking the white lightning down to the outback, but we love visiting country music musicians like yourself. I want to let everybody know, you have, I, I'm just doing a lot of research, listening to your music from last year. You got a lot of things going on for this 2022. I love for you to be able to share with our audience a little bit about who you are, your musical influences, and really how you ended up in Australia. Okay, so um, I'm Toria Richings. Uh, I'm originally from the UK. About two years ago, me and my family decided to bite the bullet really and change things up. And so we moved to the other side of the world. So I'm now in Sydney, Australia. I'm an alt country singer, songwriter. I've got so many, so, so many musical influences from sort of uh, the Everly Brothers. My mum was a massive Everly Brothers fan. So I guess from my younger age, uh, I heard loads and loads of Everly Brothers. And then uh, my brother played me uh, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody when I was about 11, which blew my mind as a child. And it kind of opened up music to me, I think, and switched something on in my head. So I spent about a year then tucked away in my bedroom trying to learn uh, Queen songs. And then from there, I found Joan Bias, which I think is what really triggered my songwriting. I just absolutely love her songs and the stories she was telling. And from there, I found Neil Young. Um, so they're, they're like my two great loves, I think, that um, have made me who I am today. Uh, Joan Bias is just great. Uh, you got some really good musical tastes. And I can tell you've been extreme, yeah, you've been extremely busy this year. I wanted to, to really go around you, your musical influences with Joan Bias, being that you're a woman in Australia, Australia and country music. How has that been just in terms of uh, being a woman from the UK performing now in Australia? Is there a lot of support? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very male dominated industry. Uh, I think it is on the whole country music. Um, so um, I, yeah, there's been some support here. Yeah, it's building. I think it's quite hard to sort of, you know, as a, a new artist, and I'm a new person in this country anyway, so no one even knew me. So it's been a bit hard, I think, to try and uh, sort of get my name out there. But um, on the whole, I've met, you know, everyone I've met here have been quite supportive. Um, but I am very much, you know, go women, go women country. You've got a great attitude. And, and so what really drew me in to listening to your music, you did a, a few lives, I think, on Facebook, especially last year. I guess yeah. I wanted to ask you where you started. I guess it takes a lot of courage to do that. Was there a point in time where you were like, I got to do this now and I don't want to regret it later? What was there a point yeah. in your in time of your life when you just was like, I, I need to go after this? Well, I, I think, you know, sort of when I was younger, I did a lot of... Um, I used to just do gigs in local pubs doing covers with a few of my own songs. And then I kind of, you know, fell in love and got married and had kids and sort of, I think my music went on the hold quite a bit. And I think our move to Australia, sort of, I'd had a really big operation back in 2018 and it kind of made me go, right, life's for living. And um, I think the move to Australia sort of sparked it. Um, unfortunately, on the way to Australia, my mum passed away and she's now like the sole influence for me that I'm just like, I'm doing it for her. I think life's too short and I think you've got to go and grab your dreams and it doesn't matter how old you are, you've just got to go for it. I love that you just said that because you got to always go for your dream even if you're 18 or 30 or 40 years old. Was your mom a musician? Do you have any in terms of your musicians in your family? Yeah, so um, she was a pianist. 
Um, but just, you know, did it for herself. She bought me, me and my brother and my sister um, were all taught piano from when we were really long, young. Um, my dad's not, well, he'll tell you he's a pianist, but he just plays chopsticks on the piano. Yeah, I've always, I guess we grew up with music. No one was ever a massive guitar player other than my dad, who knew a few chords. So he taught me my first few chords um, to the Carpenters' Top of the World, which I guess triggered everything off. But no one else has really been guitar. It's just, I'm guitar and they're all piano, really. Everybody, and we're going to plug your YouTube. you got a great background as well with your with your trucker hats, which is... Yeah, I'm a massive hat obsessive. So uh, trucker hat. Uh, Stetsons, any hats really I fall in love with, I want. <laughs> you got a good guitar cl uh, collection as well, a player's only jacket, yeah. but uh, you're really uh, fitting the the, the care some care. lovely guitars yeah i've still got um actually about 15 back in the uk that um i'm still want to bring over but um i've got to try and work that out yet <laughs> i know with everything going on have you been able to make it back to the uk no it's been yeah. really tough because obviously, like I say, we moved here and my mum had passed away. We changed our trip slightly and had to go back to the UK. So I stayed with my dad for a few months before moving here, thinking I'd probably be able to go back. So I haven't actually been able to see him for a couple of years. So it's quite hard. But it seems now, you know, um, everything's starting to open up a bit. The international borders are open here. So I'm hoping to get back there this year and, and see him and my brother and friends and everyone. Yeah, I hope you do too. I mean, and not only maybe, you know, we'll see you at, at a pub in UK performing your music yeah, it's great yeah well toria i appreciate sharing your huge i mean just your attitude i love it so we have to pull over we're gonna get into the lightning round so if you don't mind i'm trying to get adjusted here because you know driving on the opposite side with the white lightning it can get a little tricky but we're gonna do it and we're gonna get into the lightning round so buckle up okay let's do it <laughs> here we go <laughs> so Gloria, before we get into the lightning round, we love promoting local businesses, but also charities. Is there a charity that you want? You mentioned, is that charity? Do you want to mention that? Yeah. One today? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of all about charities, really. Um, so uh, where I've spent most of my life is actually in Nailsworth, Gloucestershire. Um, so I'd like to big up the Nailsworth Donkey Sanctuary there. They've just got beautiful donkeys, um, a beautiful attitude. So, yeah, I'd like to promote them. And they do rescues. Is that what that is? Is, is, yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they literally, yeah, rescue donkeys and, and then just keep them, you know, give them a beautiful life till they pass oh, away. We have a, a sanctuary for pigs here outside of Austin. Oh. And the stories, I mean, and seeing the pictures, I know I follow them on, on social media, but it's like I almost now want one. You yeah, know, well, we've got a pig actually in the UK. We have a small field uh, in the UK. So we sort of left our big pig there. <laughs> Pigs are great. Yeah, it'd be kind of hard bringing them to, to, to Australia. Yeah. yeah, it was a bit hard with customs to get her through. So <laughs> we wanted to plug a local business here in Lampasas. It's where we are. It's just right outside. Well, it's about an hour north of Austin. This business is a husband and wife called Folicious. Anne and Joseph, they're great people. What they do is they basically you can buy uh, the, the faux. I don't know if you've ever had faux. Uh, these bowls, but you can actually, they have them prepared already. All you do is add water. You can buy them off of Amazon, also their website. Go follow them at Folicious Kits on Instagram. They're also at Folicious.net. Great people. They also have a TikTok. Go follow them. At, they're delicious. They also make spring rolls, which are really my favorite. But uh, definitely go check them out. They're great people, and you can order their Folicious bowls on Amazon. So we're gonna get into it. So Toria, here we go. Toria Richings, okay. what is your favorite word? My favorite word, I guess, would have to be Gibson because a girl can never have enough Gibson guitars. I've noticed that from you. And I'm glad you bring it up. Maybe we'll, we'll we'll post a few pictures with your guitars here. So, yeah, and, and my t-shirt, Gibson. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Toria, what is your least favorite word? Hey, that's a tough one. Um, well, I do have one. I don't know if you know it. In in America, I, I guess it would be the word um, grots, which in England means um, a woman's knickers. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, yeah, I just, the word grots, I'm just like, ooh. They have sometimes, I don't know us men like, you know, I don't have a problem saying moist or, or panties, really. I don't want to say that too often, but... Women yeah. sometimes they don't like saying those words, and I don't. Maybe, I don't maybe know. it's uh, no. yeah, no. Okay, Toria, 
I know you being in, you know, from England and now Australia, I'm sure you have a bunch of these, but we need one. Your favorite curse word. What do you got? Well, my favorite, well, I use it all the time, um, would be bollocks. Um, if I drop anything, if I trip up, if I forget something, every single time, I will always firstly go, oh, bollocks. <laughs> That's a good one. We haven't gotten that one yet. So I appreciate, ah, appreciate you bringing up bollocks. <laughs> And you can use it with everything, like you just said, after a reaction. So those are always the great ones. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting to the tough part. And I've done some some real good stalking, I feel like, on your social media. <laughs> okay? So, Tori, if you have to grab one item, one thing, right, before you get on stage, are you grabbing st your Stetson hat or a pair of Wranglers? <gasps> Ooh. Stetson hat. <laughs> so I assume you're gonna say this. So are you going on stage? Are you going on stage without a pair of pants? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, I just go. I'm just women power. I'm just going for it. Just me, naked, Stetson hat. <laughs> oh, I love it. You got a great stats a Stetson that you show off on your uh, social media. So I'm glad that. Uh, yeah, you're a diehard. Now you have to pick one of these. Who do you got? Emmy Lou Harris or Loretta Lynn? Emmy Lou Harris. Every day of the week for me. She's my absolute favorite. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. How about Joan Baez? Yeah. Joan and Joan, Joan Baez. yeah. I couldn't pick between the two. If I had to pick, it wouldn't work. I'd have them both. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're now going coast to coast in Australia because you need a musician, dead or alive. Who do you got for your co-pilot? really tough it's really really tough i think i would have to go oh freddie mercury oh real that's a good one no i would definitely because he it, like queen the queen song my brother played by him in rhapsody when i was 11 opened my whole world up and i think he's a phenomenal he was a phenomenal musician and songwriter so i know he's not country but yeah i, I think yeah. it would have to be freddie mercury yeah what do you think of the the movie um, the, i actually really loved it i went yeah. thinking i wouldn't like it I thought I would be like, no, they've ruined it. It's, But I actually thought it was really, really well done. Yeah, so did I. I really enjoyed it. And you know what I love about these kind of movies is that you might listen to Queen or like Elton John, you know, I think he had his movie that came out yeah. around the same time. And then you go ahead and you just listen to their music all over again. Kind of like Motley Crue and their... Uh, their, their yeah, it does, yeah. It, it revives everything that you've, you've realized you've missed. Yeah, and that was it. You're right. That was a great movie. Okay, so now it's you and Freddie Mercury. And you got to yeah. play... He's getting in, right? You got to play a song. Are you going to play one of his own? Are you going to play his popular or, or a deep cut? Or are you going to play one of your your songs um no i think no i'm gonna make him listen to one of my songs what's the first thing that you're gonna say to him i, oh, do, I mean like i know this is all hypothetical and i don't know if you've ever thought about this but it probably would be the, the person that just stands there like i just <laughs> but, you know i met brian may actually a few years ago he was doing a fox hunting campaign in my local area my friend rang me up and she's like oh my god brian may is here so i grabbed my one of my guitars and got there and met him and he signed it and um, I didn't speak for about five minutes. I was just like a mute person, just like in awe of, and he played my guitar and he was talking to me and I'm just like, mm, mm. like it was terrible really. I'd like to relive that so I could be a normal human being. <laughs> You're normal, you're getting starstruck and uh, I'm glad he at least, I'm yeah. glad you at least brought your guitar to sign it. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I actually drove there without the guitar. And then halfway there, I thought, oh, my God, I need something to sign. I can't just give paper. And then drove back for my guitar. <laughs> I, you know, we haven't got Freddie Mercury before. And so, uh, you know, that's a, definitely a good one. Oh, there you go. Like, see, it's, you bring the English on and uh, we come out with new stuff. New swear oh, words yeah. and Freddie Mercury. That's why we have you on. I knew you were bring the good <laughs> stuff. We really appreciate you. You did great in the, the lightning round. But now this is on you. This is where we love plugging new music. Like I said, you're, you've been very busy. And I also wanted to plug this. You had a festival, and I know all of us have seen, you know, festivals changing dates. But now I think, hopefully, Tamsworth has an official date. So I wanted you to have a chance to plug that as well. Yeah, so that's, that's coming up um, from April uh, 18th to I think the 24th might be wrong by a day or two there but yeah so that's that's big in Tamworth and it is the the big Aussie country festival so I'm really looking forward to it got loads of shows there lined up so I can't wait you and then and so like I said uh, you had some great music that came out you had 
two singles that I actually I, I really liked called Truck Stops and, and Diamond Stone. Diamond yeah. Stone. And now you're working on new music. If you wouldn't mind, we would love to hear what your plans are for 2022. Yeah, so um, I'm really excited about this project um, because all my recordings so far have been done in Australia. And this time it's done between Sydney and Nashville. So um, I recorded uh, my songs here, just me, vocals and a guitar with Sean Carey. And then uh, he sent everything over to Creative Workshop. Um, my publicist in Nashville, Bill Wentz, kind mm -hmm of organized i can only describe it as a super group of legendary players that played with like johnny cash and elvis and dolly parton like the list just went on and on and on um so they're playing on my new album which i'm hoping will be out maybe towards the end of march yeah that's really exciting how does our audience find you and listen to you okay so i'm on everything really if you want to stalk me um facebook instagram I do have a twitter account but i don't really use that but instagram Facebook, it's just Toria Richings. Um, my website's toriarichings.com. Uh, my music's on on everything available, streaming from Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, Amazon. Um, you can find me there. You can find me on YouTube. Just Google Toria Richings. Thank you, Toria. Thanks so much for the opportunity. It's, it's great for me too. So of course, of course, and we love again. Like again, I said that we love coming down to Australia. The country music scene, it's there. You know, I'm seeing a lot yeah. more women country musicians. That's why I also wanted to plug you. I, I see it. I see and the, the, the talent, definitely. Yeah, and I think I, women are on the rise. Absolutely. We're on the rise with country. A absolutely. I wanted to plug and see if we could get maybe a, a, a little special stuff from you because you. I, I see that on your social media, you've been very like uh, giving out hints and a little bit of pieces. What is the new, what's the title of your new song? Um, so it's going to be called Ride Your Horses. Yeah, we're, we're very excited for that. Well, Toria, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, we got to kick you out. Uh, I know. I know. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. It's been great. Of course. But before we kick you out, all we ask is for a song. Is there any way we can get a song from you? Of course. And uh, I, I will do Ride Your Horses. This is why I love coming down under. This, right here is the hospitality, you Australians, and, and really... The UK, they give us, it's a, it's a lot of love. Always got the love for the Americans, always. Always. All right, well, here you are. This is Toria Richings, Ride Your Horses.
There you go. There's Toria Richings. There's Ride Your Horses. We're looking the end of March and we're excited. And not only that, you just listened to it for the first time acoustic. Thank you so much for joining us. And we can't wait. Hopefully, when everything is done, we see you playing in England. And maybe, I don't know, are you coming to Texas? I hope you say yes. Yes, yeah, so the plan is actually definitely towards the end of the year, we're going to come over to America and, and get a bit of a tour going there. So I will definitely come by Texas. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you obviously got to stop by Nashville. But of course, yeah, you can't miss yeah. Nashville, but I'll definitely come to Texas. Yeah, just a, a quick pit stop. <laughs> I swear yeah. we'll pay you in Texas barbecue. Oh, wow. Well, sold. All right, done. <laughs> Well, Toria Richings, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's been great. Yeah, and we hope to see you soon. Good luck with everything this year. Thanks a lot.